Hey guys, this uh, video is not going to fall into small engine repair, but this is a video, this is going to be one part of my videos on the building up a 5 horsepower for a mini bike, and I got a, a slightly bigger cam for it, and doing some other uh, basic modifications, I'm not going to do nothing crazy, but because uh, I am going to keep a stock carburetor, and I want it to be stock looking, I just want to get a little bit more out of it, and I thought you know, I'll show you a few things that I've learned about the uh, in the past year doing research for this project because I usually just focus on small engine repair instead of modifications but uh, this video is going to cover two uh, things for this is for flathead engines this is a five horse Briggs I'm building so this is the head off of this is a brand new head new old stock head you see it is a model 13 head some people will tell you to use a model 10 head to raise compression because that's for a four horsepower the bolt pattern is the same but the combustion chamber is made completely different. It raises compression, which is usually a good thing. But on flatheads, you want as much flow as possible. You'd be better off having more flow than more compression on flatheads. The main, the only modification in this video is going to be cutting a fire slot. And I just got it drawn on there with a sharpie for right now. And you want it in line with the uh, spark plug. And the theory behind this is when this plug fires, you know, most of the explosions right here until the piston starts going down, then it spreads to the rest of the piston. Whereas if this is cut out some, you know, your flame can travel more and ignite the, the complete mixture. And it's one of the things that's not going to give you like, you know, three or three or four horsepower. It's going to, may not even be enough to even register on something, but it makes a cleaner burn. And it's something they used to do on the old flathead Ford V8 engines and stuff. And it's a very common modification to flathead engines, and I figured... I'm going to uh, more of an old school build on this. So why not do a old school modification on it? And I could be completely wrong. It might actually help it, you know, get gain a horsepower or two. I don't don't know the, the specs on how much it actually helps. But uh, you know, like I said, I'm trying to keep it a stock build as much as possible. So something simple like this, if it helps it, it helps, you know. And to counteract the compression loss from removing material here, I'm going with a twenty-seven thousandths uh, copper head gasket. Which is, and I might end up shaving this down just a little bit, but I may not. But uh, since I'm using a thinner head gasket, my only, main reason I'm using a thinner head gasket is to make up compression from compression loss from this and to gain a little bit overall. And then copper head gaskets are usually more uh, reusable if you have to tear it apart for something. So I'm just going to use a Dremel here. And some people will cut this out in the milling machine. And most people only go about uh, 30 thousandths deep, which is not very thick at all. And you get it too thick, cut too deep, you know, you won't come through the head over here. And you don't definitely do not want that. Then you run it. And I especially don't want it on a brand new head like this. I kind of hate modifying a new head, but I got a brand new block to build the engine out of. So I figured to get a brand new head for it. You know, that way I'm trying to keep about 90% of the parts of new or new old stock on this engine. So. And don't forget your safety glasses doing any type of metal work like this. And another little point I'm going to bring up, you want to make sure that it's dipped like this. You don't want just a square channel. Like I was talking about, some people cut out a milling machine. Well, they leave a sharp edge, and that can cause a hot spot, which can cause a, a pre-detonation. You don't want that, which would be like knocking. And we're just, like I said, I'm just going to do a very mild one on this, because I don't want to get nothing crazy and ruin this head or lose too much compression. So uh, there's several ways you can do this. I'm just using a Dremel. i got a 120 grip paper on this. Also got a 60 grit one in case this don't want to cut it good enough and come back over. But you want to make sure it's good and smooth when you get done.
that's really probably about all I'm going to do. You probably could go a little bit deeper in that, but like I said, I don't want to go crazy with it. I'm just trying to, you know, help it a little bit. You know, I'm not building a, you know, a power monster here or nothing. And also, this uh, is probably illegal in certain uh, racing classes and stuff, which I'm not going to be actually racing. I'm just, you know, something to have around here just to mess around with. So I'm not worried about that, but it is something to consider because it is an internal modification. I'm going to do this just a little bit more and we'll get back with you and look at it. I like to get just a little bit deeper. Well, it didn't quite turn out as pretty as I hoped for, but I think it'll work. And also, you see how I sloped it down right here? That way, you know, it kind of it can flow up through there. The flame can move more. You could take it down just a little bit more if you wanted, but that's really about all I'm going to do on this. And uh, like I said, you don't want to go too deep. You want to make sure it's lined up with your spark plug as close as possible. Okay, so that's all the fire slot. Now, I guess it don't look too bad, does it? Next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, spark plug indexing. And it's really simple. And it's not one of them things that might give you like 0.01% more power. You know? <laughs> but you got to think, if you do 10 things that do do that, and eventually you will actually have an increase. Every little thing adds up. Okay, spark plug indexing is actually really simple. This is an NGK equivalent of a J19, which is B4LM. That's what I've been using in just about everything anymore. Is NGK they seem to hold up better. I used to be a firm believer in Champion, but I switched to NGK. I'm going to do a separate video talking about that. Okay, uh, spark plug indexing is each spark plug is made different. I mean, they're made the same, but you know, with computer error or human error. When you tighten your plug all the way down, your electrodes are going to be in a slightly different spot. I'm hoping out of these three spark plugs, they're each going to be quite a bit different. The way we have a better example of what I'm talking about. Also, check out my new little ratchet I got. It's got three eighths and a quarter inch on there. It's perfect for spark plugs. Okay, so I'm going to snug them all about the same. Okay, now you see, you got to. The open part is pointing this way. So in theory, this could cause a incomplete uh, ignition. Because or especially if the open part is pointing this way, because your explosion is going to be faced more that way. So what we're trying to get is the opening here to face directly towards my fire slot. The way when the explosion happens. Most of the explosion is going to be forced towards the piston instead of the valves. And the same thing in overhead valve engines. This ain't just uh, for flatheads, but uh, we're just using this as an example because it's what I'm currently uh, working on. So now let me uh, pull this plug out and put another one in here and let's uh, hope it don't uh, line up exactly the same. That way you can see more of what I'm talking about. So now, tighten to the same spec, it's pointing over here towards the valve. So most of your explosion is going to occur over here in this area here. And all this stuff, it just makes it more efficient and a more complete burn. So, you know, <laughs> I might have to buy 15 spark plugs in order to get it to point over here. That's just one extra thing I'm going to be doing. And I can't decide to use an NGK in this build or a, a E3 because uh, I want the most combustion possible. You don't think too much about a spark plug causing, you know, performance problems, but Again, it's one of them little things that adds up. So if we do get the spark plug indexed and we get this fire slot, you know, we might gain 1% more power, whereas if we didn't do that, you know, if I do a couple more things, that's when it really starts adding up. Let me get another plug here and we'll see what we can figure out here. Okay, so I went through about 10 more plugs trying to find it, and this one's real close, but again, it's pointing over here. This is an E3 plug. This is uh, what I was talking about. It's supposed to give you a more complete burn, a little bit more power, so just another one of them things. But you want it pointing at least towards the piston. So if you get it, you know, any position like through here, you're good. I've actually heard of people putting a, like another washer on here, like your spacer here, just to space it a little bit. And uh, if you're going to use a E3 plug in place of a J19, it's an E310. And here's the uh, copper head gasket I was referring to earlier. See how thin it is. Alright, so another modification I'm going to put in on this video is uh, I'm going to be shaving what they call the eyebrows on here. And all this does is make the fuel 
flow into the cylinder and the exhaust flow out better. So I'm not going to show all this on camera, but I got the copper head gasket here. You just want to mark inside here. You don't really want to do too much here like this. And all this does is just open it up a little bit more. So we're going to keep this part here. Uh, so the main part is the just this here and this here. So we'll show a little bit of this and what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I put the, you want to make sure your valves are in there so you won't take a chance of hitting the valve seat. And also, you don't want to get really too much into the the cylinder part. You don't want to cut down into the cylinder. I've seen some people cut down to the cylinder level with the this little lip around here. And that's going to provide good fuel flow, but you're taking a chance of that one of their piston rings getting stuck on there and breaking. So you just want to just gradually slope it up. That way the gases can flow better and yeah this does low com lower compression a little bit but it makes up for it in fuel the, the flow on these old flatheads you just want to kind of go in a sweeping motion like this and we're not going to go crazy with it Alright, so you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here, just getting a gradual slope on there to make everything flow a little bit better. And see, I did get off just a little bit right here. I still got quite a bit of sealing on the head gasket here, so it should be good there. And uh, just be careful and take your time because you can really uh, ruin a block doing this if you're not being careful. So uh, I was kind of, I started not to do it on this since it is a new block, but. I took a chance and I think it turned out pretty good. It should really help flow a little bit better. I'm also going to do a mild port and polish on this. Uh, this actually don't look too bad at all. So I might just see a little spot on the intake right there. So I think I'm just going to dress that up a little bit and be done with it. And a little bit of an edge. And I don't want to mess up the stretch because I am going to be using a screw in muffler. So I might just leave the exhaust alone. Alright, so another little modification I'm going to be doing is to the muffler. And a lot of people just run a straight pipe on something like this, but I don't want it to be excessively loud. But I am going to modify the stock uh, Briggs muffler here. If you look down inside there, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a baffle in there. And uh, that's something that causes a little bit of restriction. Now, I'm not necessarily doing this to make it louder or sound any different, because I like how these sound, but I just, I figure with that cam I'm putting in here if I can get just a little bit less restriction on the exhaust it'll help so that's what we're going to do I'm going to show you how to take one of these out it's going to be kind of hard to see but uh, basically all you need is a long punch and a hammer okay, I got a hole through it now let me work with it and I'll show you what it looks like when it's out Okay, you hear the owl in the background. If you look inside there, the baffle is now gone. It's all hollow, but you can still see the baffle pipe there. So you're still going to, it's basically going to act like a glass pack, with, you know, just without the glass in it. And this is the uh, baffle that was right here in the middle. That's all there is to that. So that's really going to open the exhaust up. And uh, if it's too loud, I mean, it's no big deal. I can just put in a new one, a regular one. But that's just something I wanted to experiment with to see uh, how much of a difference it'll make. Well guys, if you got any questions or comments about fire slots or indexing plugs, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.